Hi, my name is Bree, and I have the privilege of serving as Chief of Staff here at Transformation Church. At TC, our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word just for you. So let's jump into today's message. All right, so um, I wore all, all black today because I'm ready to fight. And I think the whole series, I might be real, like, in all black. I, I mean business. Um, I, I, have, I have come um, on assignment to deliver people from themselves. If you thought half of what God thought of you, you would not be in the position you're in today. But you have allowed the many layers of lies to become the covering of the true purpose of who you were created to be. And today I'm on assignment to unleash and unlock you from you. I have been given a mandate and assignment. Y'all can tell how I'm talking. I, I am on a whole nother level today. There's an authority that I'm standing here with that is not something of speculation. It's proven. Today, I have to talk to you from not what I'm hoping, what I know. Today, I have to. My, the reason I was born was to help people find out God's purpose for their life. That's the reason I was born. Even tomorrow, as we celebrate Dr. King's birthday and all the things that he did for this world, I feel like Martin this morning. No, okay, let me... I know that for some of y'all, like, how could you say that? Because he wasn't the only one that was made to impact the world in a significant way. Do I got any world changers in the room right now? I said, do I got any world changers in the room right now? They may not know who you are yet. But I'm on my Martin swag this morning. Why are you saying that? Because on the inside of me, I know God put something in me that's supposed to spark something in you. And I didn't put it there myself. He put it there. And when he puts something there and we hide it from the world, we are robbing everybody of God. If God puts something in you and you never put it in the world, you are robbing everybody, not of you, but of God. And I'm sick of us using excuses, our family backgrounds, generational habits, our own mistakes to disqualify us from unleashing in faith what God put on the inside of us. And so today I, I have been tasked with the assignment to stir you up. The Bible says to stir up the gifts. I pray that every word that I hit, it reverberates in your heart. It gets down on the inside and you're going to be watching a football game and you're going to be having the bubble guts and it ain't going to be the tacos you ate. It's going to be that thing on the inside of you that's saying, let me out. Let me out. I've been locked up in here too long. I let too many things have excuses. Let me out. God put, oh my God, let me out. This is the year that we go let out what God put on the inside of us. Charles, they better come get me. Let me out. That book has been saying, let me out. That ministry has been saying, let me out. That song has been saying, what? Let me out. That adoption ministry has been saying, let me out. That curriculum has been saying, let me out. It's been saying, let me out, and we have allowed, oh, we have allowed the lies to cloud our vision. But today, I'm, I'm believing through the word that God has given me. This year, 2023, is going to be the year that you let it out. Uh, somebody just say it by faith. Say, let it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's things coming out of you that you don't even know is there. <laughs> Do you know the greatest version of me is the stuff that I don't even know is there? But God put on the inside of me, and I just had to be obedient and disciplined to allow myself to cultivate it and develop it until it got out. Somebody shout at me, let it out. <laughs> 
some of y'all, you better just pause your Instagram for a little bit because you're going to have to reintroduce yourself. People around you don't even know you yet because you don't even know you yet. But the thing that's about to come up out the inside of you is about to change all your conversations, your family, your finances, and your day-to-day -day work. Somebody say, let me out. Let me out. Woo! It's Vision Sunday. <laughs> And for anybody who's here and thinks this is hype, you ain't been here. Anybody thinks I'm just up here sweating to get a, a hooray? I believe this with every fiber in my, like, I can't even, like, my whole body's shaking right now. Because if I could impart to you what's on the inside of me, you would no longer have any excuses to what you could and could not do because of who is on your side. It would be different if you made up a plan by yourself and was trying to get God to co-sign it. But there are some things that God has placed on the inside of you. you this is how you know it's him because you don't even want to do it. <laughs> oh, come on. Anybody that's ever had a real vision, it, it ain't even like, I don't even want that. Being up here, I don't want this. This was a prerequisite for the purpose. He had to give me a platform for the purpose. This year, we stopped praying for platforms unless it has a purpose. I told the team, I don't want no more Instagram followers unless I'm supposed to impact their life. I don't want no more speaking engagements unless I'm supposed to make an impact there. Stop praying for a platform if it does not have a tied purpose. Y'all see, I ain't even looked at my notes yet. Because something has risen on the inside of me that wants to get you to have clear vision. Everybody shout at me, vision. vision. If I don't do nothing else right, if I have failed at anything else or everything else, the one thing that I can stand here and say since 2015 that I have made an intentional effort, made time, and have not stood on this stage without is a clear vision. Now, the reason why this is so important is because everything that comes out of life has been a result of somebody's vision. The shirt you have on was somebody's vision. The chair you sit in was somebody's vision. The screens that you are watching this on was somebody's bitch. You are now experiencing the reality that was not there, but showed up in one person's heart. And now has been duplicated, replicated, and now is the normalcy for everybody because one person got a what? Vision. What are you holding that we all need? What has been on the inside of you that you let a career and a college diploma keep you in a field and never release, release what God put in you in faith? You are working on a retirement plan when God has been trying to release revelation from your life. This is the season where we seek God for clear, say the V word, vision. I want that word to haunt you. I want you to become like me, a victim of vision. I'm a victim of it. I can't go a week without doing nothing. Not because I'm, I'm trying to avoid something or not do something. It's because I was laying in that bed and that vision will start <clears throat> <clears throat> and I'll get random ideas at four o'clock in the morning and I'll start praying about stuff and I, I'm watching a movie that's all nothing about it and God shows me a revelation about what he called me to do. How do we get that out of the goof troop? How is Max going over the crowd? As some of y'all know what I'm talking about. How is him getting on the string and going over the crowd and 
and, and, and becoming something that he saw, but it was a, like, how did that speak? Because I'm a victim of vision. God has shown me something and given me glimpses of the future, of me in the future, of you in the future, of this church in the future. And the one thing that I'm praying for everybody under the sound of my voice is this is my first message in 2023. I'm praying you have a collision with vision. I'm going to say it again. I'm praying for every person under the sound of my voice that this year you would not be able to skate by all the things that you've been doing. I'm praying you run smack dab in the middle of vision. I pray you have a collision with vision. I pray it knocks you off your feet. I, I pray that God gives you something so clear it scares you. I, pr I pray that you have a Saul to Paul moment that, that is so bright it blinds you, that it's going to take somebody laying their hands on you and saying, yeah, 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 and the scales will fall from your eyes. Some of y'all are going in directions that you won't even be in 12 months. I'm, t I'm prophesying to you right now. You will not even be doing what you're doing 12 months from now. The only way that you do that with assurance, though, is that you get a vision from God. And today, that's why I'm so excited. We're in uh, day seven of 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm so proud of you, church. And every night we're here at six o'clock and we're, we're, we're pushing away social media and we're pushing away plates and we're pushing away because why? We want to hear from God. See, God gives us a template that we can do all the time to get fresh vision. If you've never known how to get vision, I'm going to tell you real quick in 10 seconds, okay? You pray and you talk to God. You hear and that's the awareness of God. You listen. Oh, you thought you already heard that one. I said hear. Hearing and listening are two different things. Hearing is the awareness. There are all type of sounds I hear in my house. Something goes off, kids screaming, somebody pooping. Like, I, it's all kinds of sounds. But there's a difference between hearing it and then listening. And, and, and we don't just want to pray. We want to pray and then we want to hear and then we want to listen. That's intentionally focusing and even quieting ourselves. Shh. What was that? Is that... Hold on, God, are you telling me to forgive them? No, no, no. All last year, 60% of my time was being mad at them. I have so many comebacks. And, and if we want to get petty, <laughs> I can be Petty McPherson. I, I, but God, you, hold on, you're taking away my purpose at this moment. He said, exactly. Hear me. Go, hey, crazy faith offering's over. Now go give. No, 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 no. Remember December. December was when they did that. Yeah, yeah, now I'm telling you. See, the nuance of hearing God and then listening to him is the difference between obeying and being confused about what God said. The Bible says the steps of a good man, a good woman are ordered by the the only way somebody when you pull up to that drive through can actually compute and deliver your order is that they are listening not just hearing and what i'm telling you right now this is the season that god is requiring not for you to just pray not for you just hear but for you to everybody say listen but then you have to have faith to do this next thing receive like like receiving vision from god is more important than anything that you will ever do. Because a vision from God can change why you do what you do and what you do when you do it. A lot of us are doing stuff that we don't know if it's the right thing. If I just be honest with you, when I sit down with people, the truth of the matter is they don't know that if what they're doing is a part of the purpose they were sent here for. And so they end up doing it for paper instead of purpose. Well, at least I ain't going to be broke while I do this. Or at least I'm going to have a diploma. We're doing it for some pieces of paper instead of purpose. And today I'm coming to shake you up 
I don't care, and I even feel led by the Spirit to say this, even if you're in your older age. There's some people that are plus 60 that have written this thing off like, well, I guess I'm just going to try to enjoy the rest of my life. God said, no. He said, I put you here for a purpose. I feel this thing. And there's some stuff, your ladder, I prophesy to you, is going to be greater than your former. You're going to do more in the next 30 years of your life? Uh-oh. Somebody should get excited right now. Than you've done in the former 59. God is about to use you. You will be known for what is to come. Not what has been done. Once you receive vision from God, it changes everything. And this is the last thing. You could do all these things, but if you receive it and then you don't believe it, it's dead. So, so, so you, you pray, you hear, you listen, you receive, and then you believe. And this is the thing that I'm asking everybody to do over these next 14 days of we're in prayer and fasting. And today I'm starting a vision series that I'm going to go until the Lord tells me to stop. Because this, this, this prophetic word that God's given me today changes everything. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's how I feel on the inside about it. It changes everything. I may be in this series for two years. Charles, I'm not lying to these people, am I? We, this is going to reshape the way we live, we think, we move, we give, we serve. Because it's that important to the core of what God called us to earth to do, okay? So, so, so I'm asking everybody to mark my words. If you don't believe in this stuff, all I'm asking you to do is hear what I say today and then come check back on us in a year. Because for the last nine years, when God has said something, Bishop, it has come to pass. We don't understand it when he says it. But as we start walking through the years, like, dang, God told us <laughs> this was going to happen. God told us. It held as an anchor for us. It gave us vision to see when everything was blurry. And this year will be no different. This is proven. And I believe that this comes to us. Because we have crazy faith to believe God. Go to Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Do y'all know God doesn't want you to figure life out? I know this is a different concept than you've been told. He wants to tell you what to do, and he wants you to go in the steps he's already laid out for you. Most people are just stubborn, disobedient, and have to learn the hard way. But that was not God's intent for you. And, and, and I need everybody to know that because it's like, oh, you, got, you just got to have the hard knock life. If you want to. Like, all things do work together for the good. But do you know all things can just work? Okay, I don't. Um, like, we say these things in preparation for disobedience. Y'all, I'm going to miss God, but you know all things work together. I'm strung out on crack, but all things work together. I'm going to have babies with everybody, but all things, yes. But if he's giving me directions, and I'm stepping where he tells me to step, and I have accountability in the community, and no, I won't be perfect, I will be progressing, but all things can just work. But we've con been conditioned to believe that we have to make so many mistakes that it turns into this messy testimony. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that we ain't going to go through our, our crap. I'm just saying, like, stop planning for it. Okay, I just got to keep going. I have faith to believe that God can speak. I can obey, and it will be the preferred future for my life. Somebody say preferred future. Do you know God has a preferred future for you? Like, like there's his perfect will, and there's his permissible will. Like, there is a will that God's like, this is the chart that is going to give them the course of their life, and if they run this, just run the play. Like, just run this play, it work every time. Every time. But then, the one thing he gave us is will. So he said, go right, but God, I like left. 
Leave them alone, but they look so good. <laughs> Don't eat that, but bread. You said in your word, bread of life. He's like telling you, like, okay, let's be honest. We're a humble, open, and transparent church. How many people you know God nudged you, told you specifically, or encouraged you not to do something, and you still did it? Oh, I love my church. Because the one thing we're going to be is real. Okay? Well, what if we would have obeyed that? What if we had faith, even when we didn't understand, to do the things that God says, even though it don't make sense? This is why in Luke 18, 8, this scripture has really um, impacted me because Luke is telling what, what God is wanting to see on the earth that it seems like he may not find. Look at it. I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly, but when the Son of Man returns... How many will he find on the earth who have faith? Who will be here being like, God, I believe you? No, 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 no. They left, but I'm right here, 10 toes down. Like, I believe you. And the truth of the matter is I can come into church and I can find fun. I can find facts. I can find fear. But will we be a people of faith. It takes faith to believe a vision that's not here. For me to see what is invisible currently and start acting like it is real now, that takes faith. You cannot have a vision with facts. You have to have a vision with and I know this is going over some people's head, but I'm going to keep pounding it in until something in you clicks because you were formed with faith. It's in your DNA. There are things that you, everybody uses faith every day. When you go out to your car, you're using faith, but it's so dependable that you don't even think about it no more. Now, some of y'all got to use crazy faith to start your car. You're anointed with four quarts of oil every day. Now, think about it. When you go to sit down at a restaurant, you don't say, in the name of Jesus. Father, before I sit down, I thank you that this chair has been constructed and crafted to hold up the weight of my glory. No, 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 no. You're so used to it doing what it always is done, even if you ain't sat in that exact chair, that you just put your weight on it. God is asking us at the beginning of 2023, would you please put your weight on the words that I speak to you? Oh my God. If I tell you it's going to happen, put your weight on it. If I speak that your family will be healed, put your weight on it. Somebody better drop it like it's hot and put your weight on what God has said about you. Somebody shout at me, put your weight on it. You believe your employer more than you believe God? They can cancel you tomorrow. But you wake up ready to serve them. Ready to use your gifts for them. Ready to abandon your family and all others. And God said, I spoke things over your life that you still haven't put your weight on. How long will you make me wait for you to believe my word? And this is why I'm praying for a collision of vision for you. I'm praying that, I'm praying that something slaps you so hard that you will not be able to continue to do the mundane things that you've been doing and using the weak excuses that you've been using. Well, I'm just a mom. I just have to make sure that my kids get out of the house. And God made you more than just a mom. Yes, you are supposed to nurture those children, but there's a vision. He gave you the idea to nurture children, to nurture other things, anything you touch, anything you get around, anything that you care for grows. 
Stop letting the label limit you. Vision has to be valuable. And I think one of the things that, um, I don't know where it came from, but I thank God for it, that was innate on, in, on the inside of me, is I've always been able to see what wasn't there. I can go back in my childhood, and I can think of things that I believed could happen when there was really, like as I look as an adult, there was no reason it should be actually happening in my life, but I believed it. As I sit here with my parents in the audience right now, I remember believing God. I played drums growing up. I remember believing God for a custom drum set at the age of 15 that cost $9,000. Now, if your 15-year-old is believing for something, it's usually a car or something like that. I wanted something to do with my purpose. I knew that music was a part of my purpose, and I be be began to believe God for something that was out of my reach. Can I tell you, by the time I was 16, I had that drum set. Now, mom, am I telling the truth? I still have it to this day. It was such good quality that I've kept it for decades because I saw a vision. And, and let me tell you what I did first. I drew that drum set and put it on my trapper keeper. Y'all remember trapper keepers? Y'all don't know nothing about the folder that you could put something in? Okay, okay. Can I draw? No. Y'all missed it. Are you an artist? Uh-uh. But all I knew was the word said, write the vision down and make it plain. And the greatest offering I had at that moment was not money. It was my time and my, watch this, try. Somebody's greatest offering to see what God has for them is not treasure and is not time. It's a try. We have been at the starting line, afraid to try. And if you won't try, the supernatural power can, of God cannot come in and expand what he's giving you to do. Faith without works is dead. Let me say it a different way. Faith without trying is dead. You so afraid of failing and looking stupid to your friends, they already think you're stupid. Like, let's... let's <laughs> Let's be honest. They already think you're stupid and they talk about you because they see how much potential you have and how little you have planned for what God has for you. Okay. So, write this down. Vision is most valuable. Vision is... I do not know how to make this more... Um, Important to you, but vision is more important than money. I want to say a lot of other things, but whatever you think is important, vision is more valuable than that. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Something dies where there's no vision. Another translation says, where there is no prophetic revelation of the future, people cast off restraints. Another translation, they stop caring. A lot of your apathy in your life is because you don't have a vision. And where there's apathy, depression comes in. I want to give you a clinic right now. Many of your anxiety and depression is coming from not having a clear vision. And because you do not have a clear vision, you don't feel like your life is amounting to anything. And so you allow the lies of the enemy to convince you that it would be better for you to stay in this low place and not try and not get from this place than to do the things that God birthed on the inside of you. If you get a vision, everything changes. Vision is, everybody say most valuable. Vision takes a man to the moon. Vision builds airplanes in a bicycle shop. Vision makes you take off from the free throw line. Vision makes you build a car with no motor. Vision makes you build an ark when there's no rain. Vision makes you put a baby in a basket when they're coming to kill all the young men and you still get to raise them. Vision. Somebody shout at me, vision. 
vision makes you leave your thriving business and follow Jesus? Ask the disciples. Vision makes you wake up at 7 a.m. in your daughter's room and write down outlandish things. That you would be in an arena 37 days after you became the pastor. Vision will make you go to the cross and die for people who may not accept you. Somebody shout at me vision. Vision is valuable. The question is, has vision become a value? Look what I just said. Vision is valuable, but it hasn't become a personal value. Valuable is talking about the price of something. Value is talking about the priority of something. Where does vision fit in your priorities? Okay? We're not talking about just worth. I'm talking about how does it impact your daily life? Okay, practical example. Everyone knows that health is valuable, but health is not everybody's value. Everybody knows, yeah, I should be running, I should be drinking water, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. But health is not a value to everybody. It proves by what we eat, it proves by what we drink, it proves some of y'all pee and it's orange. Y'all flush the toilet because when I go into public places and I see that your urine is the color of this church's logo, Y'all nasty. <laughs> having, having money is valuable, but has financial stewardship become a value? We know money, but it's not a priority yet. That's why your kids got all the J's, but you don't have heat. How do you have a PlayStation 5 and no hot water? Okay, y'all don't want to talk real right now. Y'all want to act like, okay. People know that marriage is valuable, but they don't value honoring their spouse. Like, God wants vision to be not just valuable. He wants it to be your value. Somebody say, vision Vision. is my top value. Now, some of you just had to say that by faith. But if you get a vision for your prayer life, a vision for your family, a vision for your home, a vision for your health, a vision for working out, a vision for having healthy relationships. Yes, all your relationships are toxic now. But why don't you close your eyes and see it before you see it? See yourself actually calling people for their birthdays. And giving them a gift without toxic underbelly of they begging me something back. Why can't you just give just just get a vision? Could you see yourself being the one to say I'm sorry first? Can you get a vision? When you get a vision of how God created things to be and who he's created you to be, it changes everything. Vision must be a value. Put that in a point. I'm going to put it in a point so you can write it down. Vision must be a value. Okay. And once vision becomes a valuable value, this is what I've seen in my life. It's the most powerful force on earth. Vision is the most powerful force on earth. Pastor Mike, you're making a lot of wild claims. I'm telling you, vision is the most powerful force on earth. You can see things that are not here yet. The Tesla is normal now. But do y'all know... A car driving with no motor in it was not a thing. That was somebody's vision that came to life. What has God hidden in you that is supposed to be on earth but cannot be released until you say yes? Pastor Mike, why are you coming so heavy? I don't got another year to waste. I don't have another moment to play around with why God put me on this earth, and neither do you. Write this down. Oh, my God. Uh, 
Okay, vision is the ability to see the invisible in order to make it possible. That was too good and you didn't get it. Vision is the ability to see the invisible. It's not here yet. In order to make it possible. Let me give you a practical example. 68 years ago, there was this record that nobody could break at running the mile. Nobody could run the mile in less than four minutes. And 68 years ago, Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. This hadn't been done in years. One man does it. Everybody sees what was impossible become possible. And do you know how long Mr. Bannister held that record? 46 days. As soon as people saw that the impossible was possible. I'm about to preach this thing. Something on the inside of them said, hold on. He can't be the only one that has the ability to be able to produce something that was impossible 50 days ago. And in 46 days, people begin to break it. And since then, in one year, four men broke it. And now over a thousand people have broken that four minute mile. Why? Because somebody had a vision that it could be done. The thing about vision is vision is the thing that God allows to come to life so that you can break barriers for others. The reason it's got to come out of you, the reason I had to start Transformation Church and I had to be the way I am and I had to wear uh, Jordans and have braids and do it because there's some pastor that's going to eclipse me 15 years from now that needed to see that somebody could be themselves and they can write blogs and they can make YouTube posts and people who ain't got no lives can say whatever they want to say. They can point to my flaws, but you ain't got no faith to believe God to do anything. No, 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 no. God had to see somebody. The reason I'm talking so strong about vision, because this may not be for anybody in the room. There's somebody watching me. That you're trying to bring the, the thing that you can't see right now and see is it possible. And I'm here to tell you, I'm a living witness. That God can take the things that are not. The things that do not feel. They told me a multi-ethnic church in Tulsa would never work. But they messed up because I was born into higher dimensions. And Bishop Pearson, I got to be born into a church that I saw what was possible. And all I did was take what people said couldn't be done. And I submitted to the vision that God gave me and said, you got to do this. And I took steps of crazy faith to see the vision come to pass. Now, when you look in this church, you don't know if it's a white church, a black church, a Hispanic church. You don't know if it's a skinny people church, a fat people church. You don't know what kind of church this is. This is a church that looks like heaven. Oh, y'all missed it. He said, as it is in heaven, let it be done. I said, as it is, what we gonna do in heaven? We're gonna worship, we're gonna praise, we're gonna share, we're gonna love as it is. But it was what was not here that God allowed to be possible. I hope something in you is stirring right now. This is the biggest, this is the biggest thing I, I, I wanna deposit into you right now. Vision is not out there. It's in here. Let me put it in a point. Vision is hidden within you. Now, this is where the enemy wants you to shut off your ears. Because you're looking for something out here to spark you. And God said, before you were in your mother's womb, I put it in you so you wouldn't lose it. So I need you to discover it. I need you to uncover it. There's a reason why you get frustrated at certain things. That's that vision on the inside of you. There's a reason why certain things catch your attention and you'll be like, did y'all see that? And they'll be like, what? And you'll be like, y'all didn't see that? And it's like, nah, bro, I didn't see Because there's something on the inside of you that's trying to get a heartbeat and a pulse. You're going to have to excavate the things, the excuses, the things your parents told you you couldn't do, the things that society told you you would never do. You got to discover what's hidden on the inside. Okay. 
Let, let, me, let me give you a scripture you've never seen as a vision scripture, Ephesians 3.20. Now we know this, but listen to, listen to the language that is used. Now unto him who is able, everybody say able. able. That's talking about his power. To do immeasurably, that means you can't measure it, more than all we ask, think, or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. He's not using any ingredients that you already don't have on the inside. The ingredients come in the box. Oh, shoot. Don't give me a present or a gift that don't come with all the pieces. At Christmas, the one thing I can't stand is when they give you the toys for your kids. And some of y'all who ain't parents yet, I pay people to put stuff together now. I don't even, I give you extra hundred to just. Because there's nothing worse than looking at the picture and they got stuck. Four AA batteries needed. I paid $129 for this Barbie crap. And y'all couldn't include. And don't let it be the toys that ask for like them, them exotic batteries. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Can I get a C minus plus battery? What the? You got to go to Radio Shack and ain't no more Radio Shacks. And it's just. Now you got to order from Amazon. Your kids looking like you're a failure. My toy doesn't work. And you're like, I didn't know. That it wasn't included. God said, I'm never going to give you a picture. That doesn't have everything you need. Included. Somebody needs to shout right there. If you're supposed to be in the platform, everything's included. If you're supposed to be a CEO, everything's included. If you're supposed to be a teacher, everything's included. He said, I'm going to do the work that I placed on the inside of you. If you would stop thinking that you're disqualified, you would begin to discover this is the year of discovery on what's on the inside of you. Stop saying what you don't do because you don't even know. <sighs> oh, if you would have found me right out of high school, I would have told you I don't do public speaking. If you would have found me, I, I would have told you all the things I didn't do. When we tell God what we don't do, he usually laughs. I can see, <laughs> Ooh, you dumb. <laughs> I'm going to have you doing all of that. <laughs> get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> like, this is the year we stop telling God what we don't do and we discover. Is there something in me that I need to cultivate? Is there something in me I need to submit to authority? Is there something in me I need training on? Is there something in me that I need to, to say, I don't understand this, but I know there's something there. Vision is hidden within you. And that's why I need to let everybody know that when God puts a vision in you, it's not just good ideas. Because right now, as I've been talking, some of y'all have been thinking of um, um, good schemes and ideas to get to your version of success. Many are the plans of a man, but it's God's purpose that will prevail. I would hate for you to spend the next 15 years doing something, giving everything to something that will never fulfill you. See, when it's God's vision, it's connected to purpose. And when it's connected to purpose, it's going to help you fulfill your destiny. And when you fulfill your destiny, you are fulfilled. There are people right now that only make $10,000 a year and who are fulfilled. You said, there's no way. <laughs> you said 10,000. <laughs> there's no. Fulfillment is more valuable than zeros in the bank. There are people with millions of dollars, no peace. No, no contentment. Always on the net. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. If there's sorrow with it, it might not have been a blessing from the Lord. 
The enemy gives blessings too. Okay, let me, they, that was too deep for somebody because you've been driving around a blessing from the devil. <laughs> Stressed every month. Lying to people, telling them you're going to pay them back. You're never going to pay them back. You're losing equity with the people you're supposed to reach because you got approved for something when you had a 540 credit score and you called it a miracle and God said that was a test. I wanted you to learn discipline. I wanted you to know everything that is good is not God. Because as I elevate you, you're going to have to know that there are going to be more and more opportunities that come. But everything that comes is not me. Some stuff comes just because you're good. Oh, God. The better you get at mastering what God has given you, there are opportunities that are going to come because you're just good. And every good opportunity. Okay. We're not talking about pride. How many, pride, how many people have worked at something and become good at it? Hands. I need this false humility in the body of Christ to be shut up. We got to be good at stuff. That makes it more dangerous when opportunities come, though. Because when you're good at stuff, it means that you get opportunities that can seem very close to being God. But that's why we have to go back to the thing. We got to hear. We got to listen. We got to receive. Why? Because we want to do what God has for us. That is the vision for our life. So we fulfill the purpose of our life and we are actually walking in destiny. Okay. So Colossians chapter one, verse 16, for in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created. Watch this through him. For him. Everybody say through him. For him. If your vision is not coming through him, and when you do it, it doesn't give glory to him, it's not a vision from God. These are the filters I want you to be able to put your life through. So so when you when you um when you make a song called Pop That Popsicle, stay with me. And it goes number one on every chart. And, and, and you got TikTok videos of little girls popping a popsicle. And then you win the award and you stand up and say, I want to give all glory to God. Because without him, you know what I'm saying? And then I want to give a shout out to little man, man, little GG and little ZZ. And that wasn't a vision from God. Because I promise you that wasn't given through him and it didn't give glory to I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to help somebody understand that will be a blessing that comes with sorrow. You better stop coveting what other people have because you don't know what sorrow is on the other side. You do not know what sorrow is on the other side of people doing it. And this is the equation that you need to be praying and believing God for. His vision through you for his glory. His vision through me for his glory. Everybody say it. His vision through me for his glory. Give me a vision for education. Do it through me. Let me get the team. Let me see the pieces. Bring the pieces that don't, I don't have. And God, whenever this is said and done, let it be for your glory. Let me go in into entertainment and let me work with the people who may pop that popsicle. See, okay. It's not to be like, oh my God, pop the popsicle people. That's who I'm called to. But I'm going to do my business in such a way. That when they come around me, the atmosphere changes. This, this feels different than any production company I ever worked with. This is, this is different. And when it's said and done, let it be for his glory. If you can't put your business through that filter, you might be fulfilling the wrong vision. This, I'm submitting to you humbly. That God is not blessing anything that he does not author. And many people are blaming God and are frustrated for visions he never promised he would fulfill. 
Today, I want us to all go back to him and say, God, give me a fresh vision. Come on, hands lifted right now. Ah, God, give me a fresh vision. Come on, say it to him. God, give me a fresh vision. Clarify the vision of my life. Come on, give me a vision that wakes me up. Give me a vision that prepares me. Ah, give me a vision that propels me for your glory. This is what we write down. This is what we pray for. Because this is the crazy thing. God does nothing on this earth without us. Now, if I was God, I would skip y'all. No, just I'm just honestly, just me. If I was God, no, nah, boo on them, zinc, vision done. <laughs> but, but he desires for other men who don't believe to see his glory through you. So he says, I ain't going to do the vision that I got and can provide for, and I'm well able to do more than that unless I have a vehicle. Vision needs a vehicle. And my question to you is, will you be that vessel? God has been searching for things, searching for people who would do the things he's asked them to do. And will you stop wandering, trying to drive all up and down all these hills and highways, figuring out what has God sent me here for? He said, would you just let me in and be a vessel for me to use? What I found is that God is a good investor. And he's looking for a good investment. And I told God about 10 years ago, I'm a good investment. You give it to me, you going to see a return on this. And any good investor, no, I know some of y'all haven't started investing yet, but I'm believing as we start going through some of the things I'm about to teach you, your whole mind is about to change. God is an investor. You can look at the parable of the ones that he gave, one, two, 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 five, two. He said the master went away and he asked them to, to watch over what he gave them. And, and when they came back, the one had doubled it, the other one had doubled it, and then one of them buried it. They took what? God gave them and they protected it instead of pushed it forward. I'm asking the church, would you please open your life to be a place where God can invest his vision? So what's in heaven can come to you and through your works, your obedience and your prayer, it come to life and actually be real for people. Stop praying as it is in heaven. Let it be on earth if you're not going to be a vessel. Because he can't do it without you. As it is in heaven, but don't use me. We want your kingdom to come, but do it through another group. What? God, let your glory fit. He said, I'm not filling an arena. I'm filling a person with my full expression. And now I need them to do what I asked them on the earth. This is why. This is why. Vision, write this down, is God's investment in you. And I believe that God is going to invest fresh vision in everybody under the sound of my voice. This is a message you need to watch back. You need to hear. You need, you need to study. Because the keys I'm giving you a vision right now is the thing that took me from us having 300 people on the north side of Tulsa, me standing up in 2015, telling people that God was going to do something powerful in this church. Me standing here with people looking at me cross-eyed. I remember this gentleman literally nodding in the front row, just... I mean, it was the most distracting, so I just, I just acted like he was agreeing with me. Ain't that right? God's going to do it. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember us not having anything to feed our volunteers and people bringing their own, like, snacks from their house to be able to say thank you to. I remember, but God gave me a vision. I need to tell somebody, all you have is all you need. 
Vision is the key to your future. That word vision in the Greek is the word optica, okay? It means coming into view. What are the things that God's showing you that's coming into view this year? They haven't been there yet, but my family is coming into view whole. My health is coming into view. I'm seeing something different than I've ever seen. Seeing it before you see it. Seeing beyond your sight. And a lot of you this whole time have been thinking I've been saying vision and you, you, you compute sight. Sight is what you see with your eyes open. Yeah, I don't have the money for that. They deny me for school. Nobody in my family has ever done that. Close your eyes. Everybody right now, close your eyes. See what you don't need anything but faith to see. See yourself happy. See yourself whole. See yourself serving. See you in your new house. See you giving away cars. See you being a blessing to everybody that's around you. See you obeying God without back and forth. Come on, see it. I'm asking you to see what is not yet reality. See it before you see. See your kids actually talking to you with respect. See you free from that addiction. Get a vision. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Some of you are going to spend more time with your eyes closed over this next month than with them open. See your body responding in health. See it. See you falling in love with the word of God. See yourself being an aid and not a hindrance to the people around you. I want you to begin to meditate on the things that God has said about you, even when your situation looks completely opposite. Vision is an internalized, clear picture that is considered worthy of being pursued. The vision that you see in your mind right now that God is dropping in your heart, it's an internalized, clear picture. Nobody else can see it, but it's considered worthy of being pursued. This is the year that you're going to pursue what you cannot show everybody, but what you see clearly. I'm going to say that one more time. This is the vision. This is the year that you're going to pursue what you can't show everybody yet, but you see very clearly on the inside of you. See, this is the thing I found out about vision. Vision should be out of reach, but not out of sight. If the vision is not bigger than you, it's not a vision. It's just something you need to plan for. (laughs) Some of y'all don't need a vision to be out of debt. You just need to make a budget. But to be able to help people come out of their financial struggle and be able to be an investment to other people, now I need God's help. It should be out of reach, but not out of sight. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm giving you keys right now. It's important to pursue those things that are not, watch this, vision should not be easy. It should be something that you could not do on your own. A vision uh, should be difficult to pursue and demand the assistance of God. I'm I'm trying to tell you, like, just getting the house is not a vision. Building the community is. Okay. I'm scared to say some stuff to, to... I'm scared to say some stuff to y'all because it's going to make you think I'm crazy, but I am. And and so... (laughs) I have plans to build a community. I'm going to say it over here. I have plans. Not the church. Michael Todd. I'm, I'm, <laughs> they missed it, Brent. They missed it, Cordell. My plan for my family is to have a community. That people can't even clap because they don't know nobody who's ever done it. When my kids graduate high school, I plan for them not to buy their first home. I plan to give them their first home. It's only crazy till it happens, Cordell. You already know I'm planning for it. You already know. I bought land last year. See, this is... 
I'm not just talking about it. I'm living this. I bought land last year. I bought 40 acres last year, and I'm getting a truck, and I'm going to put the title mule. I got my 40 acres in a mule. I, like, I bought land. More am I telling the truth? I bought 40 acres last year, and ain't nothing on it. And I go out there every week. There go Bella House. Hey, baby. Oh, y'all. <laughs> there go MJ House. <laughs> hey, Bob. Get off. Get off. I could have bought a house with the money, but I had to give my vision a place to grow. I, I almost want to walk off the stage right now. Boy, you preaching. I know. You doing that thing. You doing it, boy. You better put that out. Have you given your vision a place to grow? Are you so connected to government assistance? Ain't nothing wrong with it if you need it. But if that's where you have settled, you have settled below where God has called you to live. I'm trying to bust your ceiling today. What do you need to do to prepare a place for your vision to grow? It may not be 40 acres. It may be $40 in a, in a savings account. And you just name that account, blessed to be a blessing. And every month you just put $40 in there. And when God increases, you put more in there. And, and wait, I did this. Like, like I, I'm just telling y'all right now. Ten years ago, we, me and Natalie made an account just to bless people. That had less than $100 in it. Now that account does things that changed people's lives. Not in services, not on platforms, not in, it's literally, did God say to buy them a car? You sure that wasn't the Taco Bell? <laughs> All right, you run the Target. I'm gonna go across the street to a car dealership, I'm gonna buy my car. The reason I'm saying this stuff to you Seven years ago, it was, Im it was impossible, but I still had the vision. I could not do it, but I could see it. And what I'm telling you right now is God's not limited to what you have seen. He's only limited to what you can do. I remember like being in a place and being scared to declare my vision. And, and I know a lot of people are there. I'm almost done, y'all, but somebody's life depends on this. Um, I remember thinking that people would think like I was not just crazy, but like I was like proud and prideful if I declared what God said. Like, I don't want nobody to see me like that. I don't want anybody. And God said, do you care about how they see you or how I see you? And God, would, God really encouraged me. He said, do not ever devalue the vision I give you. Don't ever step back from, step away from the light that's produced with the vision I give you. Now, if you produce the vision, if it's just a good idea, get away from that quick. But if I tell you this is what you're going to do, I need you to believe it, proclaim it, and be sure of it. And I said, okay, God, um, but could you tell a couple people? <laughs> no. <laughs> could you, you know, it would really look good if a couple other people had the same uh, direction. And this is what God tell me, and this is going to free somebody. 
Vision is given to a person, but always fulfilled by a people. God never gives a vision to a group of people, but he never allows a vision to be fulfilled without a group of people. Oh, God. So there are things that other people are dependent on you to release so that they can be in their vision. Had I not obeyed God to start Transformation Church, do you know how many people would not have moved to Tulsa? How many people would not? Oh my God. But it goes back further than that. If Bishop Pearson would not have come and Bishop Gary and my parents would not have obeyed God with a vision of a church that did not, was not in existence, I would never be, it goes back further than that. My Godfather passed away this past week. George Vanette. And I began to think before I spoke this message, he was the John the Baptist of this whole group. He came to Tulsa with Bishop Pearson and with my dad's best friend and all these different people. And he was always saying, y'all, come to Tulsa. God shown me something. Destiny, our worship leader, that's her father. It's my God that I've known him my whole life. And as I began to listen to the stories, it was the vision that he saw that God showed him at Tulsa being a gathering place. Of all these great men and women of God coming here, I would not be in Tulsa today was it if it was not for George Vanette. You've never seen him on the platform, but the vision of one man ran throughout the lives of so many people and has me on this platform today. The last time I saw him alive was the day after Christmas. And he came over to my house to get some of Nat's crack and cheese. It's good. And as he sat there at my island, I came out and he started to weep. And in his older age, he began to cry all the time. Like if you saw him any moment, he would just begin to cry and say how proud he was. And he said, this is what I saw. He came to version one conference and just cried. This is what God showed me. This is what I've seen, the worship and the praise and the people and this is what I saw. And if God could give somebody a vision, one person, but it take a people for it to be fulfilled. What could God do with us? It is limitless. What could happen if all of us got behind the vision of what God has said for this church? And we just believed it. And we lived it. And we served it and we gave to it. And it honestly brought every vision that we've ever had all together because all things do work together. For the good of those who are loved and and called. When I think about God giving vision to a man or a woman, Moses was given a vision. But God had to go get the people out of slavery. He delivered the people so that he could have the people to be able to fulfill the vision. Paul had a vision to reach the Gentiles. And he had to gather a team of people, Silas, Timothy, Barnabas, a group of women, so that they could carry out the vision. Me. Me. I have a vision for this church, representing God to the laws and found for transformation in Christ. God is gathering people from all over the world, a people to start a revolution, to do something that has never been done. Jesus was given the vision to establish his kingdom here on earth, but he had to do it with 12 disciples. This is what I'm praying for everybody, that you would have a collision with vision. The one warning I'm going to give before I give you the word of the year is that when God gives vision, write this down, vision demands discipline. This is why a lot of the things that God said we don't see. Because if he said it, we want him to do a magic trick. He said, but this thing is so great, you're going to have to be disciplined. You're going to have to be consistent. You're going to have to do it when nobody else is doing it. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, 
the people perish. Hebrew, that means throw off restraint, or it means they throw off self-control, or it means they throw off self-discipline. When there, where there is no vision, there's no self-discipline. If a person doesn't have a vision for their lives, they lose self-discipline. Can I say it in the point that hit me? Vision makes you organize your life. When you get a show enough vision from God, yes, I said show enough. When you get a show enough vision from God, it don't got to be big. It's just got to be, I know this is it. It makes you organize. A real vision, a collision with vision is dangerous. When God gave me this vision, I became dangerous. And I'm praying that you get a clear one because if you ever find a vision for your life, you might lose some friends. If you ever find a vision for your life, you might lose some excuses. If you find a real vision for your life, you might lose some weight. If you find... Uh, I'm th- <sighs> let me be real. God came to me two years ago. No, let me go back before that. I'm trying to show y'all from my real life. I'm not preaching something that I, I ain't living. What happened was God told me five years ago, he said, Michael, I only can bless the ministry to the level your body can take it. And I was like, my, maybe my preaching... He said, no, your body, you are unhealthy and you do not look like I've been good to you. Make you want to eat in secret, like, hold on, God. (laughs) But for two and a half years, I ignored the word of the Lord. I went in to get some tests. I was trying to get insurance for my family, and they was like, yeah, buddy, no. I'm like, what are you talking about? They said, uh, this is what's going on, this is what's going on, this is what's going on. I said, what's the cause? He said, if that's a direct reflection of your weight. I said, God, he said, I told you. <laughs> it wasn't even, I... Two, two years ago, in the time of prayer and fasting, 264 pounds, out of weight, up here just... The weight of his glory was right here. It was all right here. You can go back and watch all the video. My face just was full of Chinese food, full of Krispy Kreme donuts, full of blue bell cookies and cream with root beer. Oh, y'all going to be fake. And whipped cream and cherry sauce. Fool. And God said, Michael, I wasn't motivated. I felt like I've seen fat preachers all my life. (laughs) Y'all gonna be fake. Like, I've seen people do stuff unhealthy their whole life. Like, he said, I didn't ask you what I allowed them to do. I gave you an assignment. And then he gave me a vision. He said, Michael, the thing that I haven't told you, because I was trying to see if you would obey me just on my word, is that there are tons of athletes who need salvation. And you have the package spiritually, but you don't have the packaging. They won't hear anything you say because they can see how you live. so disrespectful (laughs) yet true (laughs) he said I've held back a piece of your influence because you won't obey me and I got a vision of me sitting down and praying with LeBron I got a vision of me counseling these guys through marital problems I got a vision of me and Charles and my brother Brentum and us going, flying into a city, nobody knowing, and baptizing a whole team of people. Y'all missed it. I'm, I'm just telling you what I got a vision of. And when I got the vision, when I saw, I can't even barely get tickets to a game, okay? So that's not possible right now. But when I got that vision, 
It organized my life. I told my trainer, I said, every day, meet me, wake me up. Wake me up at 6 a.m. I put the gym, I took the excuses away. I took the gym from down the street, I put it in my garage. The car is getting rained on, snowed on, all this stuff. This body, we would take better care of a vehicle that will depreciate as soon as we drive it off the lot instead of taking care of the one vehicle we get to do this purpose. No, put the Tesla outside and let me take care of this temple. The vision organized my life. Eat meal prep. One cheap meal with date night. No ice cream for eight months. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm your humble servant. <laughs> But I did it. But I did it. But you gonna do it. Whatever God has given you a vision for, you can organize your life to live it out. Vision becomes the source of self-discipline. It's a source. And that's why I came to tell you the greatest weapon of our adversary, the devil, against your life is to get you involved in good things that are not the right thing for your life. I'm going to say that one more time, okay? The greatest weapon of Satan is not to get you to do bad things. He knows you're too good for that. He knows you're not going to go off and do bad things. He just gets you preoccupied with a lot of good things so that you never do the right thing. This is the year we stop doing good things. This is the year we get clear vision and do the right thing. Life gives you what's good. Vision tells you what's right. Okay? As we, as we move into this, what I'm asking everybody to do is Habakkuk 2 too. We got 14 more days of prayer and fasting. If you have not joined us in this time, you need to start. Eat your last piece of meat today. And at midnight, start with us. Do, do, do something. Give up something. And begin to pray and fast for a clear vision from God. We'll be here praying tomorrow night. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Like, I want you here, 6 o'clock. If you can feel this building, get in here. Vision is more valuable than anything this year. If we get it right right now, we're going to get it right for the rest of this year. And then I'm asking you to do what Habakkuk 2.2 says. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. It's not a vision if it's in your head. It only becomes a vision when it's written down and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Another translation says, and God answered, write this, write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? Vision must be visible and vision must be vocal. If it's not visible and you're not saying anything about it, it's not a vision. It's a dream. And a lot of us have been daydreaming, and God wants a vision to actually come to earth. Can I show you just a quick video from 2017 where I was speaking things that weren't happening, and they're happening right now. I want you to see it before you see it. Take a look at this, and then we're going to close. When I talk about vision, I'm not just talking about this church. I'm talking about your life. He wants you to see something with your eyes closed. See, you have sight. You only regurgitate what you actually see. When I look out at this audience, I don't see y'all. Y'all are beautiful. Y'all are wonderful. But I don't see this. I close my eyes and I see the auditorium. 10,000 people per service coming into this experience. And I see it. And so that's why I give everything. I don't see what I see. I see what he's showing me. If you could open your eyes of faith, not to be limited by sight, but be able to get a vision and see, I am standing in a place that I did not have sight for, but that God gave me vision for.
Yo, only God can do that. Only God can do this. Somebody shout at me, vision. 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 I'm nobody from nowhere that God spoke a clear vision to. And all of this has happened because I had faith to believe. He is no respecter of persons. This is the year we get clear vision from God. And I got to say this because what I've recognized, some people are so down right now, hurting right now, frustrated, so damaged by the last loss. That they don't feel like God can use them. But what I've found is every time I've gotten vision, vision came in the valley. God trusts people with vision in the valley. When you don't feel like anybody sees you. When, 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 you're, not, when you're not on top, when everything is, is going wrong and everything doesn't seem profitable and you should be blowing up but everything seems real normal and nobody sees your true gifting and that prophetic grift nobody's calling on God says I'm giving you vision for the future in the valley you need this moment to prepare you for what you're actually going to do today if you feel like you're in the vision in the valley I want to let you know that when God gives you this vision even when your bank account seems negative and you got five credit cards that you still owe people on and your family is not together, whenever God gives vision, vision is for victory. <laughs> God never gives you a vision that he, that he intends not to come to pass. <laughs> he never told somebody to do something. He was like, wait till this fails. Vision is for victory. And what God is about to show his church is a vision that is going to come to pass. Somebody say vision, vision. is for victory. Every year God has given this church a word as a model to let you know that he will speak to you. And every year he has done exactly what he said. And church, I have the word of the year for this year. I can't. Okay. I'm so excited about this, but let me, let me let you know that God proves himself. 2015, we take over the church, and, and, and literally, I'm just praying that God does not kill me as the pastor of the church, and, 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 and God literally gave us this word, survive, and there are some seasons that you just have to simply what? Survive. It's not a forever season, but it's just a season. People were coming, people were going. People were voting, people were saying, he too young, they, I don't like that, I don't like that. And God said, I need you to stay clear to the vision even through adversity. Survive this. And then in 2016, God said, all right, give me another word, Lord. He said, maintain. See, all the, the words God gives you is not sexy. Some of them are just instructions. I need you to maintain this. I need you to stay here. I need you to keep your eyes on me. And it was 2016 when there was a breakthrough and God took us. Now, I want you to see, this was our whole volunteer leadership team. This is, nobody was paid on this picture. No, 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 no. I need you to understand that my parents and uh, the P's and Pastor Barbara and Tammy and Warren and Francine and Scott back there just, he wasn't doing nothing. And uh, like DeMario, like people you still see around today. But I, 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 I told them what I saw. And somewhere in them, they believed what they saw that they didn't see. They believed what they saw that they didn't yet see. And in 2016, God said, we could go beyond. And in 2016, the budget grew $400,000 and 400 families joined the church. You couldn't tell me nothing in 2016. I said, God, God has done what he said he was going to do. 2017, he gives it to me in 16 and he does it in 17. Okay, so beyond here. And then we went to the next year and the next word was stride. He said, yeah, you grew find the pace of grace. Stop using all your effort and energy to make this happen and rest in my grace 
and we cut things and we stop doing things and we, we said, God, okay, we're going we're gonna to step back. And God said, all right, watch me work. And that's when the little series we did, Relationship Goals, went viral. And literally once that happened, we had no social media team. We had no video editors. We had nothing. We were posting those sermons on YouTube and we were getting 24 views every week. Like, I want to let y'all know how it really started. But God said, maintain. So he said, be consistent. Put the videos up there. And my mom and her little prayer group was watching the videos. Nobody was watching the videos. And <laughs> that was so good, Michael. I was like, thanks, mom. <laughs> like, and she'd been my cheerleader ever since. And, but God said, all right, now watch me work. That two-minute clip with the little orange balls and all that stuff went viral on Twitter. Two million people watched it in 48 hours. And it was a two-minute clip, and they start going to figure, like, where's the rest of the sermon? We went from 1,800 YouTube subscribers to over 250,000 in 30 days. Like, and it ain't never stopped since then. But he said, when you do less, I do more. So I was like, dang, this vision thing is working. <laughs> And then God said to us something so clear in 2019. He said, this is the year of release. Ooh. He said, Michael, stop holding everything and let it go so I can give you what you're supposed to have. In 2019, this is a personal thing. God asked me to release itinerant ministry for six months. Many people don't know this, but... Once relationship goals went crazy and I preached at Elevation Church, I went from four speaking engagement requests the year before and I took every single one of them. <laughs> Everyone. To over 3,000 speaking engagement requests in 12 months. And the Holy Spirit told me, in the middle, in the height of going to every church I've ever wanted to go to and meeting people, and they paying me to be there. I pay you to be here. Like, all of this stuff, my wife was slipping into depression because MJ had autism, and I was gone. And God said, Michael, I need you to release something. And I'm like, God, whatever you want. This mountaintop that you think you're on, I need you to give up every speaking engagement. What? Hold on, God, this is what's going to get me out of debt. This is what's going to take me. Hold on, God, this is how people, this is how I'm going to build your platform. This is how I'm going to help you. Come on. This is what you called me to. This is, I thought, he said, I called you to be a wife, a husband to your wife. I don't give, care about none of this. My picture of the family on earth is that man, that woman, and them children. He said, I need you to choose in private what is going to affirm you publicly. And you remember it, Brent? We sitting in my arm. Natalie almost punched Brent him in the face because Brent wanted to travel. He was my assistant. He was like, yo! And Natalie looked at him. He said, never mind. <laughs> I mean, we had a, this is real. And I took a big red marker and I put an X through every month on the calendar from July to December. I can't, God said, release it to me. I'm not talking from a, a, a idea. This is what I've lived. He said it was the year of release. I didn't know he was going to ask for the thing I thought I wanted. Release it. And then God gave us this building. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. I didn't know my releasing of this personal desire would produce the vision he gave me 37 days after I became the lead pastor. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would have been on the road and you would have missed being right here to lead the charge to get the building they told you was unavailable. We got the building. We came in here, we celebrated. We weren't supposed to be in here. We had conference here. And then the Lord said, you can't go back. And we stayed here. And literally, God did so many amazing things in this year. And then we went to 2020. And God said, this is the year I'm going to make you stronger. 
And I was like, let's go. I stood on the board. I was like, strong. We got to get you up. Yeah. Did all that yelling and sweating. We cut the ribbon. Grand opening. Pandemic. Grand closing. <laughs> Y'all, I cannot make this up. It was like grand opening. See you in three years. What? His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. In 2020, we got stronger because he took everything conventional away from us and said, you got to rely on me. And that's why when we got to 2021, he said, now this is the year you got to be anchored. You got to drop on what I said. You cannot be bothered by who opens back up. You cannot be bothered by the climate of who comes and who goes. What happened? I need you to drop your anchor on me, Michael. And this church dropped their anchor and said, we're going to be faithful to what you say, God. In 2022, while we were back in our old building, God said, all right, you ready for the word for 2022? I was like, mm, not really. No, because when God stopped speaking and now you know it's going to come to pass, it's like, what are you about to say? <laughs> you feeling good this morning? <laughs> like, but he said this, he said, Michael, here is holy. And I didn't understand it for real. He's like, everything you walk into this year, no matter how it feels, I meant for you to be there. And then the spit hit the fan. I mean, the first Sunday a year ago today, the spit hits the fan. He done told me here is holy. And I'm like, this? This is what you want? He said, this is the year of intentional limitation. I had to do something that would not discredit your character, but I had to get the fans away from here. Hey, stuff is 2020 hindsight, doc. He said, I need to clear out the fans and I need to raise an army. And he said, so I had to do something that would not discredit your character. People do a lot nastier stuff with spit, but... <laughs> But he said, I had to get the fans out of here. I had to, I had to, I had to get people who, who, who their families like, you still go to that church? And somebody be like, yeah. I had, I, had, I had to get some people with skin in the game. You couldn't be just standing out here by yourself. That's why everybody in here, you ride or die. You're going to help me see the vision that God gave me and put in my heart. It's going to come to pass. See, I had to do something to weed out the people who would not do anything to participate. The people who are here want to be here. <laughs> the people who watch in Transformation. Can we give it up for Transformation Nation who have been ride or die? Y'all my people from Alaska to California to Hawaii to the Bahamas to Africa to New York to Texas. Let's go. But he said, I'm clearing out fans and I'm raising an army. And everybody don't want to go through the training it takes. So he said, Michael, now you're ready for the word. I could not have given you this word any other year. He said, but this word is going to change the trajectory of this church. Transformation Church, the word for 2023. God specifically told me that this is the year of kingdom. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, 2023 is the year of kingdom. His kingdom come, his will be done where? On earth. Uh-oh, we about to tear this thing up and God's kingdom is about to raise up in us. Woo! This is the year of kingdom. Now watch. Let me... God told me, he said, the reason I had to raise up an army is because this is the year of the rise of a holy rebellion. We are about to rebel against culture, against social norms. They said the church don't have no power. Wait till you come into this place. The blind eyes will see. The 
lame will walk. People will be healed of traumas. Y'all better see it before you see it. People will be financially turned around. Change will break off of people. This is the year of kingdom. Put, that, put me up there with the graphic. Let me preach this graphic real quick. And I'm telling you, the next six weeks, every message I preach is going to be a revolutionary, life-transforming message. You've never heard this before. I am so full of this kingdom message right now. It's the only message Jesus preached. When he came on the scene and he started his earthly ministry, do you know what his words were? Repent for the kingdom of God is here. What? The kingdom of God is here? We don't understand it, but I'm going to explain it to you over this next season and over this next year and over this next two years and over this next... This is now the end of an era and a start of something new. Our church is going to be a kingdom church. That's not a cliche, that's a mandate. We're going to give more than we've ever given. We're going to set up shop and culture. We're going to help people see Jesus. Somebody shout at me, kingdom. The K is backwards because everything in the kingdom is opposite of culture. The ING is emphasized because everything in the kingdom is active. We are moving, we are giving, we are loving, we are learning. There's about to be a lot of learning happening. The dom is the conjunction, which means domain, which is the first instruction that, that we were given in the garden. It said to rule, subdue, and dominate on this earth. The reason the body of Christ has been begging is because we lost our kingly power to dominate things on this earth. Uh oh. And God said he's about to give us access to new domains. Uh oh, we walk in and step in in new domains. And the G has a crown in the middle of it because God is the center of everything that we're doing and he holds everything together. If you're ready to embark in faith, in the vision of living in the kingdom, would you give God one big shout of praise in this? By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, kingdom families, kingdom relationships, kingdom businesses, kingdom lifestyle. By faith, we believe your word, God. Okay. I want to preach it now, but I can't. I've talked to you for 101 minutes. I'm way over time, but I feel like I've emptied out my soul to let you know that we're about to have a collision with vision. Hands lifted all over this place. God, I thank you that what you're birthing in this people is a rise of a holy rebellion. From the camera people to the guitarist and everybody in between, I thank you that we will raise kingdom kids. <laughs> that we will have kingdom relationships. Father God, that we will do finances the kingdom way, Father God. That something is about to rise on the inside of us that's going to change every domain we walk into. God, let this church see vision like never before. Father, speak to us clearly. God, thank you for being a man of your word, even when we weren't. Thank you that you've done everything that you said you were going to do in today. We honor you, we praise you, and we believe. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. By faith. I believe. Say it one more time. I believe. I believe. By faith. I believe. The vision I believe. you have given me. Today, that's the cry of your church. The vision is for victory. And Father, you give us vision at the end of the day. It happens through us, but it's for your glory. So that others can see that you are God. Father, even in this atmosphere, if there's anybody watching, listening, or in this room, that they know they're far from you, but today they saw a vision of themselves close to you, walking with you, giving up those things that have been substitutes, giving up weed, giving up alcohol, giving up those people-pleasing relationships, giving up their will. Today, Father, I thank you in this atmosphere, there's an atmosphere of grace and love. 
And God, I thank you that nobody listening feels less than, but they actually feel worthy that you would send your son Jesus over 2,000 years ago just for a maybe. You would sacrifice his life so that we could have eternal life with you. That was the vision that you started with. Today, I thank you that we are a recipient of that vision. If you're in this room, you're listening, and you want to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, I'm telling you, you've never seen a vision of yourself like the one you're going to see with him walking side by side with you. It took me from being a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography, had a lot of really dark, bad things in my heart, and acted on a lot of those things. It took me from that to not being a perfect man, but a progressing man. Today, I want to offer you the gift, the life-changing gift of Jesus Christ. This is why I'm up here. I want you to see the vision of your life being different, not without him, but only through him. Today, if you've been far from God, you've been wandering, you're tired of doing it on your own, in just a moment, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up. I just want you to identify, Pastor, that's me. Include me in that prayer. I have made money. I've lost money. I've been on the top. I feel like I'm at the bottom. But today, I want to do something that changes my life forever. Today, I want to give my life to Christ. I'm telling you, it's the best decision you will ever make. And generations from now, your children's children will stand up and call you blessed because of your connection to the King. If that's you, you say, Pastor Mike, I want to be included in that prayer. I want you to raise your hand. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, it doesn't matter if you're watching online, you're at the gym, you're at your job right now. God says today is the day of salvation. If that's you, three, just shoot your hand up all over this building, all in this room. Y'all, there are hands going up everywhere. In the chat, you can just raise a hand. To God be the glory. You can put your hand out. Today, church, you already know, this is a kingdom church. <laughs> so nobody prays alone here. We're going to all pray this prayer together. For the benefit of those who are coming to Christ, somebody say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I'm submitting my life to your vision for me. I surrender. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again with all power just so I could live. And today, I'm asking you, Take control of my life. Give me your vision for me. Change me, renew me, and transform me. I'm yours. I'll serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we join heaven and throw a praise party? Oh, come on, y'all. This is kingdom. This is kingdom. Hallelujah. Hey, listen. If you just prayed that prayer, I want you to text the number on the screen and we're going to send you some information to help you walk this thing out. Y'all, I'm so hyped. You have never heard the kingdom. It's not a cliche. It's about to become our real life. Every week, I have a word for you. Send this message to people so they can get in with us at the start. Don't let nobody catch up. Send it to all your family. They might cuss you out. Just send it again. And, and, and we're going to start living in kingdom. Father, I thank you for this people. Thank you that you're giving them vision. Thank you that tomorrow's going to be our best day of prayer and fasting that we've had this whole time. God, give us clear vision and we will give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, we agree. We expect... Amen. Will you put your hands together one more time? Until next week, go out and live a transformed life. I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. We also want to say thank you to our faithful partners and givers here at Transformation Church. It's because of your generosity that this vision has been made possible. If you'd like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or you can visit our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons as well as our live Sunday experience that begins at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.